are back at Riverfront Stadium. Side of a doubleheader tonight between the Cards and the Reds. Cardinals lost the first game 14 to 13. There's a line score. No errors, although there probably could have been one charged on the final play of the game. Nonetheless, Rob Murphy picked up the loss when he came in and walked Hal Morris on four straight pitches. The winner was Jeff Reardon, and the Cardinals asked right-hander Bob Tewksbury to come up with a good one in the nightcap. Tewksbury worrying about it anyway. He is looking for his 16th victory of the season. He will face a Cincinnati lineup, but first we will take a look at the Cardinal lineup. As Joe Torrey has juggled a few things, but stays pretty much the same. Here's his lineup brought to you by Southwest Airlines, just plain smart. Geronimo Pena will make the start at second base, leading off. Lonnie Macklin start in left field, batting second. Bernard Gilkey back in the lineup again in right field. Todd Zeal, who hit a three run home run in the first game, hitting cleanup at third base. Gerald Perry makes a start at first base. Mark Witten again in center field. Tom Pagnazzi, who closed out the game behind home plate. Trip Colm, Tri uh, yeah, Trip Cromer. His first big league start. He's a shortstop. It's been a long night. Bob Tewksbury is batting night. Here's the defense for the Reds. Howard in left. Brumfield in center. Tim Costo in right. Pretty much the same infield with Sabo, Branson, Samuel, and Morris, with the exception being the catcher Wilson. Larry Lubers, a right-hander, is on the mound. Big, lanky right-hander who has already faced the Cardinals once this season. And Lubers gets set to face the Cardinals. In the second game of this doubleheader with a record of two and three and ERA of 4.72. Well, Larry is a native of the Cincinnati area. Grew up 10, 10 minutes from the ballpark on the Kentucky side and went to the University of Kentucky. He is six foot six and weighs 190 pounds. There's Trip Cromer, Omar Olivares playing around with the rookie. And there's Ronan. In the foreground of your picture and trying to get Cromer ready for this big league start, the first of his career. Maybe we'll see Ronan before the end of the weekend in San Francisco. He is to Cripps, Trips right, your left, and backup catcher. The Cardinals called up from double A. Here's the defense for Cincinnati. Getting sent to take on the Cardinals. It's going to be a late night coming up on 10 till 10 Eastern time. Cardinals and Reds were rained out here on June 4th and we're making it up here tonight. A game tomorrow night. Game tomorrow night, but we cannot bring that to you because of the ESPN Wednesday night rights. And then we will end up bringing you all four from San Francisco. We talked about this during the first game. The Cardinal batting averages in each spot compared to the National League average and just about all the way through a little better than the NL average. Only the eight spot uh, really is a little nose dive, but overall the Cardinals in the upper echelon and batting average in the National League. And in this first game of this doubleheader, they've added to those averages. Unfortunately, they didn't add to their win total. Geronimo Pena leads it off against Larry Lubers in the first pitch. Good fastball, strike one. For some reason that fastball looks about 150 miles an hour compared to some of them we saw in the first game. Ronald Pena was in the first game as a pinch hitter and bounced into a four cell. Ball and a strike. Again, it'll be Pena, then Macklin, then Gilkey for the Cardinals in the first inning. Larry Lubbers, one of the young right handers in the rotation for the Reds these days. 1 1 to Pena. And Ronald jumps ahead on the count. First start for Pena in quite a while. Since he broke his foot. In a freak accident during batting practice. But on a short rehab assignment, he's back and he is even with the count, two and two now. On that rehab assignment, Pena did not hit very well under 200, and towards the end of it, he did pull a hamstring muscle. And he is still not running very well at all. A couple of home runs this season for Pena. 19 RBIs, the 2 2 pitch. Full count. 11 stolen bases for Geronimo. See how the pitching fares in the nightcap of this doubleheader. 3 2 pitch. Right back at him, a leadoff walk. Well, that was one thing that dominated game one was a lot of bad 
pitching. The walks were not very good. So ten walks in the first game to go along with all the hits. Lonnie Macklin digs in. First game did provide Lonnie a chance to pick up his first big league hit, and he did. The hit in the sixth inning. So Lonnie won out of four while at Louisville. Macklin was hitting 277 when they got the call. Four home runs, 18 RBIs, a check on Pena. About 36 hits. Excuse me, 13 walks. 36 hit, 13 walks, and a hit batter in the first game. 2 and 0, the count on Macklin. Well, that's what you saw. You, you mentioned the bad pitching, and the numbers indicate that, but not only the walks, but the amount of times that pitchers fell behind hitters. Seemingly every at bat. 2 and 0, the count. Pena at first, and Macklin. Tests out Branson. Nice play for one and no chance for the double play. Branson at shortstop. Got his feet tangled up a little bit, but got the force out at second base, 6 4. Branson is doing some nice fielding plays in the first game. So he's going towards center field, and there's where you're talking about getting his feet tangled up a little bit. Does get the force play. And so Gilkey digs in with one on one out. Lonnie Macklin, fellow St. Louis, and on at first. Bernard, 310 with 14 home runs, 63 runs batted in. Greg Jeffries getting the second game off, and why not? He ran himself silly in the first game. Jeffries had four hits in that first game, three stolen bases. It was Gilkey batting third in the second game. Now he gets ahead on the count 2 and 0. Lubbers is trying to end a three game losing streak. Basically is your sinker slider type pitcher. Gilkey in the center field well hit Brumfield on the run. Nice play. Two out. In game one, he looks like he can handle himself in center field. Got a good jump and made that play look very easy. Now the key is getting that good jump and fastball and right down the middle, he goes back on the ball, reaches up to the last second, hauls it in, Just to throw back to the infield. That'll bring in Zeal, 287 hitter. Hit a home run in the first game, giving him 13, has 87 RBIs. Strike one. Runner at first, two out, first half inning, and Macklin is running. Wilson, too late, first stolen base for Lonnie Macklin. At second, two out as Lonnie Macklin steals his first. Lonnie, not the swiftest of runners, but here he gets underneath the high throw for the first stole base of his brief, brief major league career. Matter this of is hours. One, well, I was going to say one day, but hours is more uh, accurate. One and one on Zeal. A hit would give the Cards a first inning lead. Two and one on deck is. Gerald Perry making a start tonight. In the first game, the Reds and Cardinals combined to use 15 pitchers, a new major league record for a nine in a game. St. Louis tied a major league record by using eight pitchers. We're part of history. And the Cardinal Television Network said. A record by using 18 local breaks. A modern television record. Congratulations. Here comes a 3 1 pitch to Zeal. Runner at second, two out. And again, looks like they're pitching around Zeal. It's up to Perry. 
Gerald Perry making a start. He has an RBI opportunity in the first inning. Bonnie Macklin, the runner at second. Zeal on at first and two out. Two walks in the inning. Perry, 295. Most of that done as a pinch hitter. Two on, two out. Up the middle. Going to be tough to score. Macklin. Brumfield has a good arm and they hold him. And it's a good thing they did. It is a very good thing that Bucky Dent put on the brakes. Macklin would have been out by plenty. Ball shot up in here and a good jump by the center fielder comes in. Look at the low trajectory throw. And Macklin would have been out. Comes in, charges, even took a, a moment to look and see where the runner is. And once you get over that mound, that's the key. You hit, throw that ball on the mound, then it takes a long time and some errant throws. You get it over the mound, you'll have true hops. So it's up to Witten, bases loaded, two out. Runner on at third is Lonnie Macklin. Second base is Zeal, and on at first with the first Cardinal hit of the night. The second game is Perry. Witt, 248 with 75 ribbies. Now he's ahead on the count, 2 0. And Don Gullett, the pitching coach for the Reds, will trot out and talk to Lubbers. Hey, what a kid. Night. We just went through it. The whole pitching staff in game one. We need a few uh, innings from you. Don't be falling behind and don't be walking. But Still no damage done in this game starting out. It's really the first game did on the red side. The Reds had four hits in the first inning. Got only one run. Loaded the bases with one out in the second inning. Didn't score. Whitten ahead on the count here. Two and oh. Bases loaded. Two out. Two all pitch to Witt. That is a smash in the left center field. Way back and a grand slam. Mark Witten, it's four to nothing, St. Louis. The fourth grand slam of the year by the Cardinals. Nineteen home runs, seventy-nine RBIs for big Mark Witten. And more importantly, I guess you can say the first game defeat hasn't really shaken the Cardinals. They have come out swinging and right off the end of the bat, but still he drives the ball over the left center field wall. It's been a while since Mark has hit one over the boards, and he couldn't do it at a better time tonight. I wish he was strong. He's about as strong a player in the big leagues as there is. Little opposite field poke in the power alley. He got it out. Now Pagnazzi in the air to left, and that should end the first half inning. It does as Thomas Howard pulls it in, but Cardinals get four runs on only two hits. Bob Tewksbury has a four to nothing lead. Into the bottom of the first inning on a grand slam by Mark Witten. The Cardinals lead four to nothing. Here's the lineup for the Reds brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Just plain smart. Thomas Howard in left field, Jacob Brumfield in center, Al Morris at first base, Chris Sabo the cleanup man, Tim Costa in right, Juan Samuel is the second baseman, Dan Wilson the catcher, Jeff Branson at shortstop, and Larry Lubbers has already given up a grand slam as batting night. Numbers for Bob Tewksbury, 15 and 8, an ERA of 3.78. Uh, he's pitched over 190 innings, walked only 17, 83 strikeouts to lead the ball club. And Tewksbury, with a victory here tonight, would tie his career high. Take a look at the home run swing by Witten and opposite field poke, and this ball left in the power alley. Wow. Nice to get his arms extended. He did. Howard fouls the first pitch out of play, strike one. Thomas Howard entered the first game. Midway through, had a double, pinch hit, double, a walk, and then later grounded out. A 
Ball and a strike on Howard leading off Brumfield and Morris to follow. Strike two. Thomas Howard as you can see is pretty pretty talented switch hitter. This is a guy that they picked up from the Indians for Randy Milligan. And now this might turn out to be a nice pickup for the Reds a guy that could be somewhat of a utility player maybe that fourth outfielder on the team when everybody gets healthy again. Still rather young in his late 20s. Switch hitter. Well he's shown that he can hit the ball a little bit and be a very valuable addition to this Reds team. They usually don't have trouble finding hitters, do they? No. Full count on Howard. Leading off at Tewksbury. He wouldn't want the leadoff, man, would he? It's almost past his bedtime, isn't it? When was the last time Tewksbury walked the leadoff hitter of the game? That's the kind of night it's been. Well, that really is rare, very rare when he ever walks the leadoff man in an inning. But to do the leadoff man of a game, well, that's the first time I can remember ever seeing it in Tewksbury's Cardinal career. So Howard at first, nobody out. And the batter is Jacob Brumfield. 270 hitter. In the first game, Brumfield had three hits and a walk. To third, fair ball, extra bases. Howard will move to third. Macklin digs it out of the corner. It's a double, and it's second and third. Nobody up. Bob Tewksbury has given up more hits than any pitcher in the National League. 128 hits and 190 innings. Here, the slow breaking ball. And just pulled inside the third base bag down in the left field corner. It was off the railing there, and Macklin cuts it off. Runners at second and third. And now you start getting into the danger part of the Reds' order. Joe, so don't worry about it. We'll be here a few hours. Morris down the line, but that's going to slice foul. That's what you see him do a lot. See him. He'll take a pitch the other way because he's diving out over the plate. I think naturally he's looking to go the other way. And if you give him the ball over the outside part of the plate, he'll try to push it down the left side. They play Morris pretty much straight away. Ball and a strike. Cardinals with a grand slam in the first inning from Whit. Tewksbury's given up a walk and a double. That grand slam by Witten was the second of his career and the first in the National League. Into center field. That'll get a run home. And Brumfield will stay at second. Tagging and scoring is Thomas Howard, and it's four to one. With that, we'll pause 15 seconds for stations to identify themselves on the Cardinal Television Network. Cardinals bottom of the first inning after the Cardinals lost the first game 14 to 13. Sabo runner trying to steal third. Pagnazzi throw was low in the left field and the score is Brumfield and it's 4-2. And that's got to be an error. Shield tried to short hop it. And the first error of the night period. So give him a stolen base here, and you see Pags throwing it down, and Todd just going after it. Ball goes short, hops him over his glove, and into left field, and the runner comes around to score. Third error of the season by Pagnazzi. And the bases are empty for Sable. One out, the 1-1 one -one pitch into center field. Witten there. what he's seen in the first game. Can't 
like what he's seen in the bottom of this first inning. Same could be said for that man. All right. He can't like what he saw in the first game, <laughs> and he can't like what he's seen in the top of the first inning. You're getting like Leslie Nielsen. And a right foul ball and out of play. Off the bat of Tim Costo, strike one. Costo, what is he, nine for What was that? Nine out of fifteen. Nine to twelve, or is it nine out of twelve? I think it is. went three for three. Or nine out of fifteen. Right, nine out of fifteen came in six out of twelve against Cardinal pitching, and in the first game, three hits. He loves to face Cardinal pitching. Overall, hitting 290. Looks like the Reds have come up with another good player. He came into the first game hitting 254. To the count. You know, Bob Tewksbury is six and three in his career against the Reds, but one and two this year with an ERA over nine. Up and in gets Castro off the plate a little bit. Ball one. It's getting near Bob Tewksbury's son's Griffin. Griffin's bedtime. Sure, he's staying up for this one. Pena throws out Costo. A long first inning is complete. 4 2 Cardinals. Second inning, 4 2 St. Louis, and a grand slam by Mark Witten. Trip Cromer leads it off. He's 0 for 1 in the big leagues. Grounded out in the first game. The third for Sabo. Gonna be tough. Got it. Oh, he can play third. He doesn't have an arm that'll knock you over when you see it, but he is accurate and he gets rid of it in a hurry. Cromer, you see how wide he stands. Trying to keep him and just from reaching out too far in front. And look at this play by Sabo. Over the head, flat footed once again, and he throws out his man. Here's Tewksbury. Bob hitting 210. He worked in as pool over the offseason, swinging the bat underwater, trying to work on his hand speed. Not really for hitting, but it ended up hit, helping his hitting. Did it to really work on his wrists and his hands for pitching more than hitting, but it's turned out to make the difference, and he is 13 out of 62. A walk. A one out walk. Looking at the numbers by Luber, he has now walked 23 while striking out 21. That's 23 walks and 49 innings pitched. That's more walks than Tewksbury's had all year. Banner is Pena. Aranimo walked his first down. Pena trying to prove that he's healthy. Making his first start since coming off the disabled list. Couldn't catch up 0 2. Has hit a couple home runs this season, including one in the first week. The power hasn't been there, but really he hasn't had a chance to play on a consistent basis. That one got away. Ball one. Cromer let off. He grounded the third. Tewksbury drew a walk. And now it's Pena. One two by Lubbers. Did he go? They appeal to third and no says Harry Wundelstead. Two and two. Out 
field giving Pena the left center field alley. Aronimo just trying to get aboard the 2 2 pitch. Into center, Jacob Brumfield. Two up. So the batter will be Bonnie Macklin. Macklin reached on a force out his first time, stole second, and scored on the grand slam by Whitten. He is one out of five since joining the team. And there's the runner at first, Tewksbury, two out. Macklin spring training and in years past one number 51 or a number of Willie McGee but that is now occupied by Lee Guterman so he's number 55 not a very good outfield number and have to earn a lower number he's in on the count here two and oh Larry Lubbers works at home. was the eighth draft choice of the Reds in the June 1990 free agent draft. And Macklin pulls it foul past Jack Hubbard and past first base. Lonnie Macklin with a two two count now. The crowd has actually thinned out a little bit since the middle of that first game. I told you they were going to come and leave. The 2 2 by Lubers. Tewksbury at first, and Macklin strikes him. First strikeout for Lubers. That'll do it for the top of the second inning. Runner left for two Cardinals. On Sunday, October 3rd, the Cardinals play the Phillies and it's fan appreciation day at the ballpark. All paying fans attending that game receive a free reserve seat gift card good for any game in 1994. It's except opening day and fan appreciation day. October 3rd cards and Phillies. Leading it off is Juan Samuel for two Cardinals and Sammy looks at a strike. Sammy had four RBIs in the first game, including a three run home run. Way out in front, strike two. An RBI double included in that in the seventh inning. Just as Tewksbury is about to work at home, time granted to Samwell. Wilson and Branson to follow. 0 2 pitch by Tewksbury just outside. I'd like to thank Al Broughton for his fine work updating all these averages after the first game. Right back to Tewks had him played perfectly. One out. This program is authorized under television rights granted by the St. Louis National Baseball Club Incorporated. Solely for the entertainment of our audience, any publication, reproduction, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent. The St. Louis National Baseball Club Incorporated is strictly prohibited. Leadoff man retired in the line drive, and the batter is the rookie catcher, Dan Wilson. He flies one to center, and he's the second out in the second inning. Witten pulls it in. And Tewksbury, after allowing a walk and a double. Seeing two runs cross home plate for the Reds, settling down here in the second inning and deals with the number eight hitter, Jeff Branson. Branson hitting 258. Should strike one from Tewksbury. Three home runs for this shortstop. 18 RBIs. 1 2. If Branson keeps getting going, the pitcher would bat, but Tewksbury has Branson set up at 0 2. Tukes looking for his first strikeout. Won't get it with that pitch. Cardinals in the third will have Gilkey, Zeal, and Perry. 
Cardinals lead on a first inning grand slam by Witten. Into left field, and that's a base hit. Second hit of the night for the Reds, and that will get the pitcher Lubers out of the way here in the second inning. Nice to get that eight hitter up so you can have the pitcher leading off. But show the replay on the board here. Alan Branson didn't know that that ball had dropped in for a hit. He hit the ball. He took a couple of steps and stopped and then ended up getting down to first base and keeps the inning going for Lubbers. Larry he's had 15 at bats and four hits. I think 267. Cromer gets the high hop, throws him out, and that'll do it for the Reds in the second. After two here at Riverfront, game number two, Cardinals lead Cincinnati 4-2. Into the third inning, 4-2 St. Louis on a grand slam by Mark Witten. And let's talk about SeaWorld of Florida. In Orlando, remember, not only is summer the favorite time of baseball fans, Every time for good old Mother Nature. For details, call 407 363 2571. Stop by SeaWorld. You saw SeaWorld out in San Diego. Yes, I did, but that's a Florida promotion there, so I can't tell you what a magnificent time I had and seeing those animal acts and what a beautiful park that is. What about the one in Cleveland? That's a circus. Hey, Cleveland is a neat town. You ever been there? I have. As long as you stay away from the Municipal Stadium. A lot of fans have been doing that. The 1 0 pitch to Gilkey. The third for Sabo. Right. They're building a new ballpark in Cleveland and they're excited. They've got a good young team, the Indians do, and they're putting together that new ballpark. And done something there that. I think is kind of trend setting in baseball. They've locked up a lot of their younger players with multi year contracts. Fans know that they're going to be seeing a Bayerga or some of the other talent there. Sandy Alomar. Well, the only thing quite they, a while. The only thing is, though, is they've locked up a lot of those players after one year, assuming they're going to have three or four more really good seasons. Another example of that would be Cardinal outfielder Mark Whitten. He signed one of those deals and he is already signed through next year. 1-1 one, one pitch to Zeal is down and in 2-1. and one. Another example of that is Otto. And with, Pitt, with Pittsburgh, he's got a making $500,000 this year and a million dollars next year. And they draft him as a triple-A pitcher not knowing that. 2-2 two two the count on Zeal. That can work both ways. It sure can. After Zeal, the batter will be Perry. One out. In a right field. Tim Costo right there. Two away. So Luber's having his best inning so far. He's retired the first two. The batter will be Gerald Perry, who singled, kept the inning going for the eventual grand slam off the bat of Witten in the first. Oakland and Toronto were tied in the bottom of the ninth inning at six all while the Yankees are leading two to nothing at Texas. Want to know the count on Perry. Hitting 3 0 4 now with that first inning single and he looks at a strike. Larry Lubbers in the third inning. Trying to have a one, two, three frame. What a swing by Perry. Strike two. Goodness, look at this cut. Joe Perry is saying, okay, I'm going to get a pitch and I'm going to knock it out of the stadium. And swings through it. A little high, two and two. Up on the scoreboard, they're showing that Gerald Perry is the nephew of former Major League First Baseman Dan Dreesen. 
played many years here for the Reds in his 15 year playing career. There you have it. And the Cardinals. Yep. For the tail end in 87. Filled in for the injured Jack Clark. 3 2 pitch to Perry. Got it. Second strikeout for Lubbers in his first 1 2 3 inning. Bottom of the third inning rolls around. Top of the order coming up for the Reds. Cards lead 4 2. Into the bottom of the third inning, 4 2 St. Louis, and Thomas Howard leads it off. Thomas drew a walk his first time. Hitting 3 0 2, three home runs, eight RBIs is the Cincinnati outfielder. 1 0 pitch. Got him on the fly ball to center. Witten, one away. On Saturday, October 2nd, the Cards will meet the Phillies, and it's Kellogg's Major League Mascot Day at the ballpark. All fans attending that 115 game will meet mascots from other major league ball clubs, along with Tony the Tiger and Fred Bird. Fred Bird's always there, courtesy of Kellogg's. Kellogg's Major League Mascot Day, October 2nd. The Cards host the Phillies. One of Al Rabaski's favorite days of the ball. The favorite day. The favorite the day. The favorite day. Jacob Brumfield looks at ball one high. And after that game, I invite the fans to come over to St. Louis Live, where the Leukemia Society is having a promotion. What a play by Tewksbury. And he got Blunt Brumfield by eight feet. He got rid of that one in a blink. Tewksbury almost stumbles coming off this mound so quickly. Pounces on that ball. A little more time than he thought, but makes a fine play off balance throw and gets his man two out nobody on for Hal Morris well, like I thought both starting pitchers are taking advantage of these tired tired position players their arms are weary they swung the lumber so many times in the first game Al Morris with an important walk in the ninth inning of game one against the left hander Murphy that was a big at bat Failed effort by Rob Murphy. And Morris came around to score the go ahead run, the 14th run, the winning run, and that made a loser out of Murphy. On one pitch, dances low. Now Morris is going to be a good one. For many years, he's still in his late 20s, 28. So he has a long future ahead of him, you would imagine, here in Cincinnati. Two and one the count. He's hit four home runs and he takes a pitch outside, ball three. So Tuxi will walk behind the mound and say, Well, we'll get into that trance where he knows how to throw a strike. Tewksbury has already walked one in this game. Down the left field line, trouble but foul. Full count. Talked about how Morris going the other way. He's dangerous that way. Oh, he stands well off the plate, strides into the ball. To me, Joe, most of the time when you see a batter that stands so far off the plate, they're telling you they want the ball away from him. You can say the same for Witten. Oh, yeah, Witten. Very much so. 3 2 pitch. Base hit. Pena was turned in an odd angle and couldn't get up at all to grab that ball. A two out hit for Morris. You're exactly right. If Pena just would have jumped straight up, he catches this ball easily. But he was turned to the side and the ball loots him. He just would have backed up and squared away, squared around the home plate. He catches that ball. The way he was moving over his shoulder, he couldn't get up. The batter is Sabo. Tying run at the plate. Strike one. Sabo is first time fly to center. Hitting 272 is the Cincinnati third baseman. Sabo in the first game had three hits, scored two runs, it was three out of five. Ball. 
Ball and a strike. Bob Tewksbury working on win number 16. Teammates gave him a four to nothing lead in the first. Reds came back with two. That's the score now. 4-2 bottom of the third inning. Sabo two and one now. Morris gets a look from Bob Tewksbury. Jack Buck will join you for the fourth, fifth, and sixth. Tewksbury trying to get us into the fourth inning right here. 2 1 pitch to Sabo. 2 and 2. Haven't seen much from Trip Cromer so far. Only one opportunity. Anxious for the folks watching, wherever they may be, to Look at the handwork by Cromer. He can get rid of the ball in a blink, and his teammates were marveling at the kind of ability he has during spring training. 2 2 pitch. Left side for Zeal. Another error for Zeal. Did you see what I saw? Zeal looking up in the lights. Like he shied away from it. Then he made the play, but couldn't get it out of his glove. Take a look. Well, I was see him looking there. You see him kind of cringe, but then he chose to throw it and doesn't have control of it. Simply another error. No disguising it at all. Second error of the night for the Cardinals. And if I'm not mistaken, that's 28 for Zeal. It is 28. So E5 and the inning continues. The batter Costo. Tim 0 for 1 and ahead on the count 1 and 0. Fastball low 2 and 0. No errors in the first game. Two already here in the nightcap. Cardinals leading 4 2 third inning. 2 0 pitch. And a pitch to Rip, and he fouled it back. Cardinals have the right pitcher going in the second game of a doubleheader. Tewksbury, who works rapidly and who more times than not gives you a a lot of innings to work with. After the Cardinals used eight pitchers in the first game, they need some innings out of Tewksbury. Down the right field line, is that going to stay fair? Nope. Two and two. Not much foul territory down there, so it's either in the seats or chances are good it's fair. So there's been some speculation as to Tewksbury and whether he'll be back with the Cardinals. I, for one, when I look at the pitching staff that the Cardinals have, I don't see how they can not have Tewksbury back. You need him to anchor the staff when he's on the field, but more importantly, what a contribution he makes when he's sitting on the bench and helping some of these young pitchers. He's like a, another coach for Joe Torrey and Joe Coleman. Two and two on Costo. Full count, and the runners will take off with this next pitch. So. There's a break for Cincinnati, especially with Hal Morris, the runner at second base, might give him the advantage he needs to score on a hit. Three and two, the count on Costo. He's at three home runs. He's the go ahead run at the plate. Cardinals leading 4 2, and a breaking ball struck him out. Tewksbury pitches around the error. No runs, one hit, one error, two left. Reds have left two, and after three, Cardinals lead it 4 2. Tewksbury looking for number 16. He's got a long way to go in a 4-2 game. Here's that last strike to Costo. Big breaking ball and a big right-handed swinger was looking for something else and threw him off the off speed pitch. Well, Mark Witten now has 79 runs batted in. It is 19th home run with two out in the first. 
Base it loaded. Now the pitch in the dirt, ball two. Remember that grand slam that Dal Maxfield hit up in Montreal, Ferry Park? Sure do. They asked him what he remembered about that grand slam. He said, Well, as I remember, the bases were loaded at the time. Went over the fence. <laughs> All three from Lubers. Lubers in German means low ball. home run was his 19th of the year. Popped him up. Foul ball. Sabo. Well that's six in a row retired by this pitcher. What have you observed about this Cincinnati hurler anything. Well he's got a, a very live arm. He has a good sinking fastball. Pretty good velocity with the slider. And if you're patient, the question is, will he throw you enough strikes? He's already walked three, but he has settled down. And he's upstairs with that one to Pagnazzi, who fly to left his first time. Lubers is from this area. Born in Cincinnati, lives in Kentucky. One ball, one strike. We're in the fourth inning, 4-2 cards. That first game over yet? I'm not sure, Jack. Still shell shocked from it. 14 13. And they didn't give an error on that last play. No. It's... I thought that Witten was going to catch the ball when he first hit it. Well, I thought the, he had a good shot at catching it. I don't think he thought, saw it or something. Yeah, he must not have saw it. And then you said, okay, it's going to fall in front of him. And with his throwing arm, you know, you know he's at, at the worst, it was going to still be tied. Yeah. There's Witten. The ball bounced by him, and they ruled it an extra look out. They ruled it an extra base hit, and two runs batted in. But the pitch from Todd Burns was a terrible pitch right down the middle, right? Right down the middle, and that's why I was surprised that somehow the ball fooled him because he's playing center field. It was right down the middle. It's a line drive right to him, but he played it off over towards the right field. Agnazzi stays up there with a the foul ball. Cardinals playing their 138th game of the year. 24 to go after this one. Jack, I think there's a few other spots of that game we could pick on. Oh, too. yeah. The play here is Bagnazzi dunking one into right. It's going to be caught by Costo. That's seven in a row by Lucas. The, the play at the plate where they threw Pena out. That was a big one. Well, it's apparent that in the air running the one that they ruled a hit that zeal kicked in the uh, eighth inning when they scored three times that was a big play Mr. Cromer was late trip is all for two with the bat in the big leagues he has a nice easy swing a very wide stance Competitors going out each other. That wide stance is to keep him from getting out over the plate. Lunging. He got blown away. That's the third strikeout for Lubers, who has retired eight in a row. And the score remains 4 2 Cardinals in the middle of the fourth. We're into the home half of the fourth. Samuel lined back to the pitcher his first time, drove home four runs in the first game. Cardinals leading 4 2, bottom of the fourth. And a strike, and they try to get Samuel to hit something other than a fastball. He hit a fastball for a three run homer in the first game. Pops it into short left. Macklin is there. And there's the put up. Jack, that was a fastball there, but the location was up and in. Here the real key was it was getting the head was breaking the ball on the first pitch. And off of Tewksbury, you know, oftentimes batter will sit there and say he's a breaking ball pitcher, but Tewksbury's throwing averaging over almost about 70% fastballs this year. And his fastball has a little zip to it, a little bit more than you think. And he varies the speed of his pitches so well 
And his fastball appears to be faster than it really is. Here's ball one to Wilson. Agnazzi's doing the catching. There's a strike. This batter, a heck of an athlete at the University of Minnesota. He's a gopher. Breaking ball low and away. Two and one. Into right field. Chasing Gilkey back for the catch. Two out. A lot of people thought the University of Minnesota was going to be tough in the Big Ten this year, and they might be in football, but they lost to Penn State in their first engagement of the year. Dan Wilson from the University of Minnesota. Two out. Here's Jeff Branson. He singled a little flare into left field his first time. And he pokes one foul. Did you enjoy the game last night? Yeah, well. I, I was looking forward to it and it was nice to get back into football again. I was disappointed in the Dallas defense. I was impressed with Washington. They did a lot of things right in the Super Bowl defending champions and have a lot of work to do. You know it wasn't the absence of Emmett Smith. It was four turnovers and uh, poor defense that lost the game for them. And Dallas is still pretty good with Aikman and Novacek and Michael Irvin, they're still pretty good. They're going to play Buffalo next week. Bouncing ball, Pena. Hey, it's a 1 2 3 inning after four. Cardinals, after losing 14 13, lead it 4 to 2. First pitch in the fifth inning is a ball to Bob Tewksbury. The pitcher leads off for each club here in the fifth. Guards on top 4-2. And ball two. And Al Raboski said it earlier. You got to give this pitcher a chance to pitch himself into trouble. He struck out three and walked three. Walked the pitcher earlier. Wouldn't do it again, would he? Two and one. Well, he's starting to settle down a little bit now. As he is. Last man to reach against him was Tewksbury on the walk. There's ball three. Tewksbury has 13 hits. Hey, Philadelphia lost to the Cubs. Montreal came from behind and beat Colorado. There's ball four, and as Tewksbury walks, let's look at the standings in the National League East. And I'll ask you again, Al Roboski, do you think Montreal has a chance? No. I don't like him because of all the youngsters they have. Well, they're playing pretty good, aren't they? Well, they, they definitely are, Jack. And, uh, of course, the same thing you could say is let's see if they get close how much pressure is put on Montreal. Yeah, well, it makes you kick yourself that the Cardinals haven't had a stronger kick down the line. Here's Pena. And he chased a bad ball. Jack, the Cardinals are four games under 500 since the All-Star break. That's not good. That's what you know, so it's not just been the last couple weeks. It's been the whole second half. Pena has walked and flied out. In the dirt and Tewksbury scoots down to second. A walk and a wild pitch. And a ball and a strike to Pena. Yeah, the Cubs beat the Phillies five to four. Montreal got four runs in the seventh and defeated Colorado four to three. Winning pitcher Dennis Martinez number 14 beat Marcus Moore. Wetland got the save number 35. And a ball. So those Cardinal Montreal games that we have on the schedule at home are going to be important. Seattle by the way leading Baltimore two to nothing after seven. Baltimore has that winning streak and they're right in the net the American League East picture. What's he doing? And the button. So all the Cardinals try to get the run home. The only thing about it is that Macklin is the batter. The rookie outfielder. They must have confidence in him being able to make contact and get home. 
That runner from third. There's a chance of a squeeze by it, but the Cardinals seldom use it. Everything went wrong in the first game. Maybe this will be the time for the squeeze. Yeah, maybe we can get a cheap run here on a walk, a wild pitch, and a sacrifice. Let's see if Macklin can drive home his first run ever in the big leagues. Took a strike. He was robbed in the first game when he hit one back to the pitcher who grabbed it with his bare hand for the third out, threw him out. That would have driven home two runs. That was one of the key plays of the game. One ball, one strike. Let's see what Macklin's approach is. He should get out in front and try to pull the ball. Tewksbury at third, one out. Ball two, two and one. You don't want to walk in this spot. You want to be aggressive. Hit the ball. Try to hit it hard somewhere. But you can't be too aggressive and go after a pitch that's out of the zone that you can't handle either. Macklin with a runner at third, one out. Three and one. Lubers throws the ball hard, but that strike zone is elusive to him. He has walked four. And that fly ball is going to get the run haul. Tewksbury tags. And comes scooting home with a cheap run. A walk, a wild pitch, a sacrifice, and a fly ball. Macklin's first run batted in ever in the big legs. Nice going. On his first hit in the first game, Joe Torre applauding his efforts here with the sack fly. The Cardinals now lead five to two. That's where I meant on that three-one pitch. Hang, he didn't want to walk. You know, right. You know he's going to come to him. And he did come to him. Eased up a little bit. And Lonnie got the sacrifice fly. First in the big leagues. Two out in the inning and a ball to Gilkey. So the fourth walk issued by Lubers costs him a run. And it's five to two Cardinal. They made five runs on two hits. Five runs on two hits. And the Cardinal they made two errors. And a fly ball into left. Back at the track of the wall, still going and caught by the left fielder Thomas Howard. That's the final out in the Cardinal fifth. Yoki almost had himself something, but the cards pick up a run and lead 5-2. Pinch hitter to start the home half of the fifth inning against Tukes, who's retired four in a row. Some of the folks have left. It's coming up on 11 o'clock here in Ohio, Riverfront Stadium. They didn't have a very big crowd to start with. And some people who weren't even here have left. Right out. That's right. <laughs> Here's a strike to Tubbs. This fellow was a pinch runner in the first game. Greg Tubbs. Jack, a few pitchers didn't show up in the first game either, did they? Well, that was bad stuff, wasn't it? Fifteen pitchers were worked in the first game. That set a major league record. Did it? And the Cardinals set a major league record with eight pitchers employed in a nine-inning game. That was a record? Two balls and a strike to Tubbs. And a chopper foul, two and two. They had the pitch count on that. Did you get that? We'll get the pitch count. It was 300 and some. Oh, really? Oh. 300 and some pitches. Here it's 5 2 in the fifth inning. CJ Cherry on the bench to lend some moral support to the Cardinal manager. I thought he was trying to say he could pitch. Yeah, their traveling secretary. Two and two the count to the leadoff hitter. Batting for the pitcher, Lubers. And a foul out of play. Mike Anderson, a right-hander, is going to pitch in this ball game. Where did he come from? He was called up today. Lubers, five innings, gave five runs and two hits. Walked four, struck out three. Now it's three and two. He's not going to walk this fellow, is he? 
with a three run lead. Tubbs. Breaking ball, foul ball. Montreal beat Colorado. Cubs beat Philadelphia. Cardinals lost the first game here, 14 13. Lead here, 5 2, fifth inning. Here's a 3 2 pitch. And a foul again out of play. Tubbs with a good at bat. Greg Tubbs. You know much about this fella, uh, Al? No, I do not. So. One to the shortstop, Cromer. A little flip for the out. Cromer spent spring training with the Cardinals, and he looks to be uh, not affected by being in the big leagues. He is skinny, isn't he? He's 6'3 and 165 pounds. It's Red Chaney's his favorite player. That's about what Red looked like when he was. Oh yeah, young player. One out here in the fifth inning, and the batter's Thomas Howard. He hits it back to Tukes, and out at first. Tukesbury can feel the position. Always has had that attribute. That's six in a row. He's retired. Barry's retired the first two, and let's see if he can deal with Brumfield. Now, this fella likes to bunt the ball. He's he had three hits in the first game. He's had a hit in the nightcap. He stole a base. He scored a run. He's a pain in the neck. Strike one. And he's played very well in the outfield. And now that we've seen him play so well in the outfield, we assume he's going to be the second baseman next year. Yeah. He'd be their second baseman. Well, oh, Bip Roberts. Uh, it's pretty much determined that he will not be back. He's and making four million a year. Four million, and he's going to be a free agent. And and Sam Well more than likely will not uh, return. Also, and a foul ball, one ball, two strikes. So who's their new pitcher? Anderson in the sixth. Mike Anderson, who was at in Indianapolis, won ten games there. Okay. Tubbs was at Indianapolis, hit over 300, had ten home runs. Indianapolis, the Triple A team of Cincinnati. Let's see how they try to get Brumfield here. Breaking ball makes it two and two. No score in the second. It landed Los Angeles. Pittsburgh leads one to nothing after one at San Francisco. Here's another three two count. And leading by the score of five two, Tewksbury wants to. Sure, he makes the batter swing the bat. Well, Tewksbury could throw any of his pitches over four strike. And fastball. One is a fastball. And another hit. I'll be darned. That guy's like a machine against the card. I tell you, he's a, he's a pain. He's a pain in the neck. Jack, you know the Reds have always come up with good hitting teams. And just a simple fastball. You want to throw a strike, make him earn his way on, and he does so. He doesn't try to overpower it, does he? No. Takes it the other way. And now Hal Morris is up. Here's a fellow who has the potential for the long ball. He's delivered a run with a fly ball, and he's singled. Brumfield has to be reckoned with with his speed. There he goes. And Morris fouls the ball. Out of play. I was wondering why Brumfield was going and why he took the short lead that he had. Turns out it was a hit and run. Al Morris. 0 for 3 in the first game with an RBI and also had a run batted in here. Here's a fella hurt his hand when he rushed out to punch a pitcher. He paid the price. He's been out. He was out for about half a year. That was in spring training too. Jose Mesa, the Cleveland Indians. Runner at first, two out. Strike two. I was starting to think, and you know, I said, "Well, how could it be? How could it be Cleveland? They have spring training in in, uh, in Arizona, but that's right. Cleveland was supposed to move to Homestead because of Hurricane Andrew. They did not." Settle into their new spring training home that was nearly destroyed. They were in the Winter Haven this spring. 
0-2 to Morris. Darrell Perry playing first. Al Morris usually goes the other way when he's behind on the count. 0-2 with two out. Strike and the inning goes. Tixbury gets the strikeout and that's his second in the game. One left for the Reds and they have stranded four. Cardinals lead 5-2. This fella left the French Foreign Legion to come here in Cincinnati and root for the Reds. But he's seen a few ball games. Only the people who are too tired to get up and go home are here. It's after 11 o'clock here in Cincinnati. We're in the sixth inning, second game, 14-13. Cincinnati won the opener. Here's Mike Anderson pitching for the Reds. Is this his debut, Al? Yes, it is. His major league debut. He was a 10-game winner, 10 and 6 ERA, a 3.75 at Indianapolis. Why didn't we see him in the first game? He must have just got here, huh? <laughs> well, he was recalled today. There's his numbers in 23 uh, starts. He had two complete games and one shutout. He is one of 27 Reds players that uh, were not with the Reds prior to this year that are on the roster in 93. And the pitch inside, two balls and a strike. As Todd Zeal leads it off. Anderson misses the strike zone. He's not even on their non roster roster. Mike Anderson pitching to Zeal and a walk. Zeal had a couple of walks in the first game. We're going to pause 15 seconds for identification on the Cardinals television network. Zeal being held at first base. Gerald Perry, the batter. Swung right through it. He's had a single. He scored a run. He struck out. That was against Lubers. Now Gerald is batting against Mike Anderson. In the sixth inning, 5 2 Cardinals and a light hitting affair. Cardinals have five runs on two hits. The Reds have two runs on four hits. Cardinals have been given five walks in this second game. Five walks and two base hits. So that was a record in the first game. Eight pitchers in a nine-inning game, right? Eight, eight for the Cardinals and 15 total. For both teams. Yeah. I'll be darned. Oh, and two the count. Jack, there have been 16. Uh, excuse me, 19 walks in the doubleheader. Runner at first, nobody out. And one and two to Perry. Cards could use some more runs in this friendly park. Inside, two and two. Cubs beat the Phils 5-4 and Montreal rallied to knock off Colorado 4-3. Pittsburgh leads 1-0 in the second at San Francisco and Atlanta scoreless after two at L.A. Mets lead Houston 3-2, 10 innings. In the bottom of the 10th. San Diego leads Florida 3-1 after one. 3-2 three and, and probably Zeal at first will go with the pitch. Perry avoided that first game. I didn't see anything of. Him. No, you, hard to believe that he didn't pinch it at some point. Cardinals had enough runs. There goes the runner, and there's ball four. So this rookie pitcher has walked the first two. And that's six walks given to the Cardinals, and it brings up Witten, who had the grand slam in the first. This pitcher, Mike Anderson, is off on the wrong foot. 
Or it's tough to get that pulse to s slow down and get down to normal. Well, if you want to stay in the big leagues, you better learn how to throw strikes. First two have reached. Witten is one for two. And he corks it into right center. That ball back of the track might go. He has hit another home run. And it is eight to two. And he has driven in seven of the runs. That's number 19 for him. And it gives him 78 runs batted in. It's 20. Jack, 20 home runs now. And 82 RBIs. Seven RBIs on the night. A grand slam the first time. Now a three-run home run here. He goes down and get this pitch away from him. Lifts it over the right field wall. That's why I use the word friendly ballpark a moment ago. So two walks and a three-run homer. He really didn't hit that ball that well, did he? No, he's, he really just kind of reached for it. Golfed it. Yeah. Reached for it and just lifted it, popped it out of here. Oh, it's eight to two Cardinals and a foul back here. You and I have seen a lot of games here where this is a hitter's ballpark. Oh, yeah. On the other hand, we've seen some very good pitchers hold forth in this park. Including our pal Bob Gibson. A little bouncer off the plate. Pagnazzi hustles, but he can't get there in time. And he's thrown out by Branson. So Witten two home runs in this game and seven runs batted in. Well, they come in bunches for the big man. And been a while, but all of a sudden he's coming up there. Yeah, 18 home runs. And he, uh, he has eight runs batted in. He had a bases loaded walk in the first game. Right. So he has 82 runs batted in. Another well, Cardinal dugout is a little happier. And here's Trip Cromer, 0 for 2 and 0 for 3. Looking for his first big league hit. One ball, one strike. And ball two. Cromer grounded the third where Sabo made a good play, and then he struck out. Wide stance. And a nice easy swing. Two and two. Well, Trip had a couple injuries at Triple A, where at one time when he hurt his ankle, a doctor in Buffalo said he was through for the year. Mm -hmm. And obviously, the one in Louisville said, "Well, let's take the cast off and look at it." And he'll try to throw another fastball by him, and it's caught. So he's hit the ball hard a couple of times. Now there are two out, and Cromer is 0 for 4. Glad to see him hit the fastball. I was wondering if he could catch up to that heat. Well, we've seen some pitchers in their debuts. Trouble throwing strikes and I'm sure on the other side when you're hitting for the first time you're. Got a little more movement in your swing than you normally do also. Let's watch Cromer's last swing. His hands are very quiet. He comes back and. Hit the ball sharply but he didn't get the hit. And a ball. One ball, one strike. There are two out here in the sixth. The Cardinals lead at 8 2. Tewksbury, one ball, two strikes. He's walked twice and he scored a run. He's a good feeling pitcher. Keeps runners close enough. Takes care of himself with the bat. Has 13 hits. Pretty good butter. So he can help himself in a lot of ways. And he took it low. Two and two. This pitcher is Mike Anderson. This is his first game in the big leagues. And that's ball three. Tewksbury has already walked twice. Trying to wear him out on the bases. Play. Remember the Cardinals had a Mike Anderson? Yeah, an outfielder. Outfielder in the 70s? Yeah. From South Carolina? Yeah. 
I don't remember much about him. Big, tall, strong fellow, huh? Well, it's kind of lanky. We got him yeah. from Philadelphia. Yeah, same guy. And a strikeout of Tewksbury to end the inning. Three runs on one hit. You know the Cardinals have made eight runs on three hits and lead eight two. When we play the Pirates on Friday the 17th at 7:05, Bushlight Mug Night for the first 35,000, 21 and over, they receive a mug bearing the Bushlight and Cardinal logos. September 17th, Chris Sabo, strike hard slider from Tukes. Tuxbury leading 8-2 here in the sixth inning, and Sabo 0 for 2. Third ball breaking into the strike zone, strike two. Tuxbury on his way to his 16th victory. Fly ball into right on a fastball, and there's Gilkey drifting to it. Makes the catch. You think there have been a lot of pitches here? <laughs> Here tonight. Here's what happened in the first game where the Cardinals lost in the ninth. 14-13. The Cardinal pitchers, eight of them made 182 pitches. And the Reds pitchers, seven of them, 168 pitches, and they set a record. Well, they used 15 pitchers in the game for That's a, a major record, record for a nine-inning game. The Cardinals used eight in the nine-inning game for a, a single team record. 350 yeah. pitches overall. That was in game one. Here is Costo battling Tewksbury. Tewksbury does not want to turn this over to the bullpen. <laughs> does not. And Costo gets his first hit. Macklin gets the ball back in with one out. Cincinnati has out hit the Cardinals. Five to three. Costo used to be a shortstop. Imagine a fellow this size and making an outfielder out of him. He gets a full swing, doesn't he? He's strong. I asked him about how much time has he played in the outfield. He said, since I've been in Cincinnati. <laughs> he converted him to a first baseman. He was the shortstop at the University of Iowa. He's from uh, Illinois. Sam Well has lined back to the pitcher and flied out to left. One ball, one strike. Tewksbury is capable of going the distance. He has one. The Cardinal pitching staff has three. Roach has one. Osborne has one. And Tewksbury has one. This is the type of game that usually our starters require theirs. They missed the double play because Pena couldn't handle it, and he probably should have taken it himself. Cromer should have made that double play himself. It's a fielder's choice 6 4. He was only a step away from the base. But sometimes the second baseman is in your way, but he could have kept Pena out of there. Yeah, I think that was the case. Since Pena was standing at the bag, he decided to make the little shovel toss, and then Pena couldn't get it out of his glove. Playing a deep second base, Pena throws out Wilson to end the sixth inning. And the Cardinals still have their six-run lead. It's 8-2. Cincinnati leaves a man. They have left five. And the Cardinals will have the top of the order coming up in the seventh. There's a Bengals fan. They're about ready to take on the Indianapolis Colts. But we're at a Reds game. And we go to the seventh inning, and the Cardinals leading Cincinnati 8-2. A lot of room for those kids to play in this ballpark. Not too many fans left for the end of this one. Cardinals up by six, seventh inning, and Pena leads it off. Against the right-hander, Mike Anderson. The breaking ball is low. Geronimo Pena, the leadoff hitter in tonight's game, the second game. 0 for 1 with a walk and a sacrifice bunt. He's also fly to center. He rips one foul down the right field line. Al Roboski, the seven RBIs, the most by a Cardinal. Seven RBIs for Witten tonight with a grand slam and a three-run homer. The most by a Cardinal since George Hendrick did it in 82, June 29th against the Phillies. Pena looks at a strike, one and two. Well, this game isn't over. Witten's got a chance to 
pick up a few more. Pena strikes out to start the seventh inning. Put out will be 2 3 as Wilson fires down to Al Morris. And there's the second big league strikeout for Mike Anderson. Away in the seventh inning, and the batter, Monty Macklin. After Anderson walked the first two men, and then they came home on the three run home run by Witten. He's retired four in a row, including the last two via the strikeout. Now Macklin. Strike one to Lonnie. It's Anderson, who won 10 games at Louisville, has to be quite familiar with Macklin and vice versa. Popped him up, left side, should be the second out. Sabo, two gone. I'm not mistaken, I think I read where Louisville defeated Indianapolis last night to win third place in the American Association. Oh, really? It had to be a very thrilling bit of information to you. Are they in the Eastern Division? Ah, uh, yes, they are. So that's assuming that Omaha and those other clubs are in the West. You got it. You are dead on. Oklahoma City, they're out there. Yeah, they're out there. <laughs> Strike one to Bernie Gilkey. And in the left field, a base hit. Two out knock for Bernard. And that for Mr. Gilkey, his first hit in four at bats in the second game. First game, Gilkey had two hits. So his third hit of the night. Gilkey gives us a smile, and the batter will be Todd Zeal. Zeal has been all over the bases, but. Only has one hit. That was a three run home run in the third inning of the first game. He walked three times after that in the first game, and he's walked twice in this one. Trying to catch Barry Bonds. And a left field. That was crushed. Another two out hit. So Zeal adds to his average, and the batter will be Gerald Perry. Well, Todd said, I'm not going to wait around for a walk. I'm going to swing at the first pitch. And he hit a rocket. Fastball. Started to tail a little bit inside, and he just turned on it and rifled it in the left. Well, Perry is up now, and should he reach? I think we want him to walk so we can bring up Whit. He's on deck. First and second, two out. Ball one. A right-hander, Chris Bushing, getting ready for the Reds in their bullpen. Uh, Anderson is due up second in the order, and there is the Cardinals' offense tonight. Ball and a strike on Perry. Gerald with an important hit in the first inning to keep it going for Whitten. Followed with a grand slam. Two out hit by Gilkey, followed by a hit by Zeal, and now Perry. Head on the count two and one, and you might get your wish. I'm hoping so. Should Davey Johnson's even hoping. He'd like to just see him come up. Why not? A 2 1 by Anderson. Off the plate and foul, 2 2. <laughs> Gerald Perry hitting 300. Single walk, scored two runs. Look at that. The old swing and bunt. And Perry is aboard with a hit. Now Gilkey's trying to score, and he is safe at home plate. Got around the tang, and it's 9 2. What aggressive base running by Gilkey, and he scores. That going to be an RBI hit for Perry. I don't know. It's all one continuous motion. A little high breaking ball. Jammy breaks his bat. Sable comes in here. It's a do or die play. He misses it. And then it's the do or die play at the plate. Gilkey goes around the tag. He's called safe. And then he retraced and, st and reached back and put his hand on home plate. But the umpire had already called him safe. Look at his slide going around. He said he never missed me. He did catch home plate with his foot. Now, if Mark Whitten were to hit a home run here, I'd be mad at Bernie Gilkey. 
It's a single and an RBI for Perry officially. A little check swing, almost like a bunt. Witten with a 1 1 count. That pitch barely missed. Eight RBIs on the day. Only got one on a bases loaded walk in the first game. And he's had a pair of home runs, a three run homer, and a grand slam for seven RBIs in the second contest. Come on, Mark. One more time. One more time. First and second, two out. He could fastball by Anderson, but he couldn't put it in the strike zone. Two and one. Two out rally here by the Cardinals. Three straight hits. Two and one on Witt. Oh! In the right field. Did he do it again? At the wall. Gone! A three run homer for Witt. The Cincinnati fans love it. What a night. Three home runs for Mark Witten and a total of 10 RBIs in this game. 21 home runs, 85 RBIs, and Bernie Gilkey, why did you take that one away from him? <laughs> wow. Fastball down and in. He acts like he has it, but then he wasn't sure. And the outfielder going back on the ball, and that ball hit the nail on the back end of the fence, but it's still another three-run home run, a three-home run night. And they're still congratulating him. Look at, look at that, another sweeping swing. He thought he caught it, but it got up in the air, and he wasn't sure. Now Pagnazzi with a base hit. Here, do this with me while we show Mark Whitten. Can we bow? <laughs> da -na -na, da -na -na. Da -na -na. That's got to be on Sports Center tonight. It's got to be. One more time. Down and in. Look at him. Look up there. And then he starts watching the outfielder. He goes, well, I'm not too sure. But Mike Anderson's debut wasn't the way he would like it. Mark did. Well, he entered the record books. Nothing else. Witten. <laughs> What a night. A three run home run, another three run home run, and a grand slam. A little 10 RBI night. Zeal saying, get off my back on the RBI leadership. Yeah, it's 85 RBIs now for Mark. And Todd has 87, so he's catching up. Well, a pitching change as a right hander. Bushing comes in. Mike Anderson is finished. Mark Witten isn't. He will get another at bat before this game is over. Take another look. Enjoy as we go to break. Hey, a local break coming up. Third home run of the night for Witt. Cardinals lead by 10. And he'd like to forget his first. Oh! That got the home plate umpire right on the chest protector and his heart skipped a beat. Randy Marsh taking a little stroll around home plate. Now you see the numbers. Double A Chattanooga for Bushing, 61 appearances, six wins, one loss, 29 saves. But he was roughed up in his first outing at the big league level. 0-2 to Cromer. Ball one, so Trip probably saying, "Hey, this is a double A guy. I can get this guy." Cromer lined out to center his last time up, hit the ball rather well. One two pitch. Struck him out. Cromer hitless tonight. But the story of the night Mark Witten, 10 RBIs, three home runs. Middle of the seventh inning, Cards lead 12 2. Bottom of the seventh inning, 12 2 Cardinals. Mark Witten with three home runs, 10 RBIs. Ho hum. Branson will lead off against Tewksbury. Ball one. Cardinals have a new third baseman. Stan Royer takes over for Zeal. Zeal leaves the game. One for two and two walks. Branson pops up to center. We know he can hit one. Can he catch it? Yes. Witten is Mr. Everything here tonight. 
Bottomley, RBI record for a game. Gentleman Jim Bottomley. Sonny Jim Bottomley. Sonny Jim Bottomley. Back in 1912, he had 12 RBIs while playing first base for the St. Louis Cardinals. 1924, I'm sorry, I just read 12 because it was up there. I forgot the date. Leadoff man is gone, and the batter will be a pinch hitter, Brian Dorsett. How about Tony Cloninger? The pitcher had 11 RBIs in the game. Strike over the outside corner to this guy. I, I always marvel each year how he is not on an opening day roster. Big, strong catcher. Good I, defensive catcher and a powerful hitter. He's hit couple of home runs hitting 271 and limited chances with the Reds. I can attest to that because I can remember one day you were telling me that. How could this guy not be there? Base hit in the left field. A one out hit by Dorsett. And the batter will be Thomas Howard. Howard steps in. He is 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored. Boy, when the word gets out about what Witten has done here tonight, the Reds aren't going to cringe about it. It's going to be the Indians. How do we give up this guy? Pitch is low from Tewksbury to Howard. Last year, Mark Witten hit nine home runs. Drove in what, Al? Mid-40s with RBI somewhere oh, yeah. in there? Well, he's doubled both those figures. Tap to third for Royer. Gets the lead man. Pena turned it. No. According to the first base umpire, safe. Everybody started heading off the field. I started to add up the totals, but safe call was given, and the inning continues. 43 RBIs for Witten last year. Here you see the force out there. Pena didn't waste much time. He throws across, and Looked like he got sure him appeared that he got him, but... It's been a long night for these umpires. It really has. And several pitchers. Batter now is Jacob Brumfield. Strike one to Brumfield. Jacob in the second game is two out of three with a double and a single. Toronto lost 11 to 7 in extra innings to Oakland and Texas is leading 5-4 in the ninth over New York. Rumfield lines to center. That'll do it for the first seven innings. Game two. Cardinals lead 12-2. The number of changes as we go into the eighth inning. 12-2 St. Louis. New pitcher into the game for Cincinnati is Rob Dibble, who pitched in the first game and was scheduled to be the loser except for that two-run rally in the ninth inning. Pasto moves from right field to third base. Now go in and play third base. Jack Doherty into the game playing right field. Of other changes. Here's Tewksbury leading off. He's on his way to his 16th win of the year. First pitch is strike, and the fans getting on Dibble. What did you learn about Rob Dibble? First pitch was a strike, and now a pitch outside. Well, apparently, between games, he tore up the locker room. And once again, I must remind you his ERA is at 520 now, but it's not his fault. It's all his mother's fault. She is Hungarian. So you can say that. I can't say that. That's why I said it for you. 2-1 to Tewksbury. 3-1. and one. Bob Dibble, 1-3. One and three. He's appearing in his 41st game. 19 saves and an ERA of 5.20 after taking a beating in the first game. Dukesbury has walked two times in this game and scored a run. Struck out his last time. Strikes out this time. All right. Boy, 
pushing while he was in there just pitched a third of an inning. Anderson an inning and two thirds the starter Lubers five innings. Seven runs were charged to Anderson. Batter is Pena and he looks at a strike. Rob Dibble one of the classic hard throwing closers. Pena deep to right field. Home run number three on the year for Geronimo. He takes Dibble deep and it's 13 to two. Joe so you think if you if I told you the Cardinals were going to go score 26 runs in a double header, do you think they'd win both of them? <laughs> you know they won't. For a fact. 13 in the first game, but it wasn't good enough because they lost 14 to 13. And Pena with this home run blast, no question about it. Deep into the green seats. Now Lonnie Macklin. Facing Dibble. Looks at ball one. Good catch up, a ball and a strike. Lonnie Macklin made his major league debut in Cincinnati, Ohio, here tonight. Started both games. Has one hit. Head on the count, two and one. And at this time, you could literally count the people here at this ballpark. Two one to Macklin, three and one. In the American League East, Baltimore, New York, and Toronto all lost. For the shortstop. Branson throws out Macklin. Two out. Brian Dorsett has stayed in the game and is playing first base. Jack Doherty is in right and Gary Varsho is playing left field. Here's Gilkey. Bernard Singleton scored on an infield hit. He scored from second base and a ball hit by Perry his last time up. Out of play, strike one. <laughs> two out, nobody on, a run home with a home run by Pena and Gilkey now 0-2. Bernard hitting 3-0-9. Dibble has given up a run. In the first game, he did not retire a batter and gave up three runs. Gilkey strikes out, and that'll do it for the cards in the top of the eighth inning. One run, one hit, and a home run by Pena. Pena went deep, and here's how Dibble looks. Bottom of the eighth inning, 13 to St. Louis. The 11th annual Lutheran Golf Benefit for children with learning and developmental disabilities will be held Monday, September 13th at Norwood Hills Country Club. Former St. Louis Cardinal Joe Cunningham will serve as honorary chairman for the eighth year. The entrance fee $225 and includes greens fees, carts, lunch, cocktails, and dinner. Make your check payable to the Lutheran Association for Special Education and mail it to David Moran, care of Lutheran Golf Benefit, 557 Winding Trail, St. Louis, Missouri, 63131. Base hit to left by Jack Doherty. You want more information on the Lutheran Golf Tournament? Call 314 268 1234. Worthy cause in that tournament coming up September 13th. Smoking Joe Cunningham. He's my the honorary first, chairman. He was my first uh, manager of Pro Bowl. Really? In Modesto, California. Good man is Joe Cunningham. Sure, he's tuned in tonight. Here's Varsho taking one outside, ball one. Yeah. Gary's first at bat of this game. He entered in the first game. How about Joe Cunningham, his son, managed at 
Johnson City, Tennessee, and the Cardinal organization was named Manager of the Year in that league. And if I'm not mistaken, managed Mike Shannon's youngest son, Danny. It's all a weird, twisted, big circle. Varsho flies to left. Not this Lonnie year. Macklin. No, no. One out of the inning as Varsho flies to left. That is the butt man of Manhattan now, isn't it? Big right. time Manhattan, New York. That is right. <laughs> One away, runner at first, and the batter is Tim Costo. This guy is instant offense for the Reds when they play the Cardinals. One out of three in this game, three out of three in the first game. One on, one out. Costo couldn't hold up. Strike one. Cardinals in the ninth inning will have Royer. Perry and Witten who already has 10 RBIs in this game. Stay tuned for that at bat. Strike two on Costo. Costo singled his last time. Struck out in the third with two on, two out. Struck out looking. At the time, the score was 4-2 Cardinals. And Costo grounded out to end the first inning. 0-2 pitch at Cromer. Caught it on the line and can get only that one out. Had he short hopped it, would have had a shot at a double play. But what the heck, take the out. The Cardinals lead by 11. Their first big league start, I think you want to make sure you do everything uh, yeah. proper. I don't think he wants to get too tricky. No, no. Batter is Samuel. Samwell has had a nice night offensively. He had a three-run home run in the first game. In this game, he is hitless. Later in that first game, an RBI double. He's driven in four runs tonight. Oh, one pitch from Tewksbury. Breaking ball. Didn't mean to do it. Strike two. Tewksbury just, trying for the complete game. You know, he's just tired enough now that he's got that breaking ball where he can almost just flip it at will. This is the type of game that the Cardinals allow their starters to get complete games. Tewksbury looking for complete game number two. 0-2 -two pitch. Ball and two strikes. Tewksbury trying to get Sam well. Trying to pitch around the leadoff hit by Doherty. He got him. Third strike out of the game for Tewksbury after eight in Cincinnati. Ten RBIs by Witten. Cards lead by 11. Time for another great moment in Cardinal history. The date, see if you can think back. September 7th, 1993. Mark Witten hit three home runs in game two of a doubleheader in Cincinnati, driving in ten runs. And then do you remember what happened the rest of that season? The Cards went undefeated, and they won the National League East. The odds makers in Las Vegas are going crazy right now. Great moments in Cardinal history brought to you by Budweiser. Fresh, pure, natural, proud to be your bud. We can have fun tonight. Second game of a doubleheader, a long night of baseball, but it's worth it. We may see history here tonight. Witten will be up third in the inning. Royer leads it off, and now he's in the hole low and two. Did, did you get that because... See, that was actually tonight's game. That that wasn't in the past. That was tonight. Did you get that? Tonight is almost in the past. <laughs> <laughs> Royer strikes out looking. You're right. Eastern time, we're four minutes away on the scoreboard clock from midnight. Royer batting for the first time in this game. Place of zeal. Strikes out, and that's the third strikeout for Dibble. Batter is Perry. It's going to take Perry to get on base if Witten wants to tie the all-time major league lead for RBIs. Well, he's on. That brings up Witten. Although he misstated it. It's actually 12 RBIs for the high in the game and a standing ovation for the people here at Riverfront. Well, let me give you a little bit more about 
Mark Witten. It's the first three homer game since Reggie Smith hit it for the Cardinals in 76. The first 10 RBI game in the Major League since Fred Lynn of Boston in 1975 at Detroit. And the most by a Cardinal since Jim Bottomley's club record of 12 RBIs in 1924. So he could tie the club record here with a long one. Runner at first, one out. First thing is Dibble has to get the ball over the plate to him. Come on, Mark. 2-0, and oh, and Dibble talking to himself, trying to throw strikes. Can't do it yet. You know, I was trying to think. I didn't think that 12 was a major league. I think it's something like 15 runs in a, in a game, but I'm not sure either. Runner at first, one out, 2-0 to Witten. In the center field! Did he? Yes! His fourth <laughs> home! He has 12 RBIs. Da -da -da, da -da -da, 15 to 2. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. A grand slam, two three run home runs, and a two run shot. Unbelievable. And he does it against Dibble here in the ninth. And look, it almost looks like it's a defensive swing out region, but this time he has a little better velocity to supply some of the distance for him. Loves oh. to get extended. Look at it, almost off the end of the bat. I'd like to be Pagnazzi all night. He keeps on following Dibble. <laughs> he Four follows Witt. Nobody even knows he's at the plate right now. <laughs> The 0 1 to Pagnazzi. Nobody's even watching him. Everybody looking in the dugout. That is unbelievable. I mean, Pagnazzi could get drilled right now, and nobody in the Cardinal dugout would even know it. Nice play by the cameraman down by the Cardinal dugout. What a night. This has all been worth it. Oh, it sure it has. Unbelievable. Look at that. <laughs> A curtain call in Cincinnati. <laughs> well, what does Cleveland say now, Joe? Magnazzi uh, struck out, two out. And you know, Mark, I mean, that's about as much an expression as you ever see from him. Can Does you it believe it? that? I'd like to see it more often. <laughs> And so would he. Especially to come up in the ninth inning. He's already at three home runs. He's facing Dibble. I'm just in awe. Two out, nobody on, and Cromer gives us a souvenir almost. Strike two. Cromer. I was warning him. If you do that again, I'm going to have to show you I can do it, too. Wow. 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 O2 to Cromer. Trip strikes out again. Cromer struck out three times in this game and is 0 for 5. Mark Witten has hit four home runs. Can't get over this. Into the bottom of the ninth inning. Cardinals lead by 13. Mark Witten is the first St. Louis Cardinal ever to hit four home runs in a game, and he has tied the major league record of 12 runs batted in in a game on this swing against Dibble. Out away from him, he loves to get his arms extended. It almost looked like it was too far off the end of the bat, but what can you say about this performance by Mark Witten? Wow. I mean, unbelievable. Four home runs, 12 RBIs in this game. And he had one more RBI on a bases loaded walk, 13 on the day. Meanwhile, Tewksbury is going for his 16th victory, trying for his second complete game. I think he's going to make it. I think he's got a shot at it. One and one the count. This night is totally worthwhile now. It's been a long night of baseball. First game started at 5:30. It's now in a minute. I'm going to tell midnight. you how long it's been. The one two and Wilson strikes out first down and Tewksbury strikes out his fourth batter. Mark Witten is the first player 
in the big leagues to hit four home runs in a game since Bob Horner did it. Obviously for the Braves in 1976. And I, I want to... Maybe it was when he had three home runs a game. Either the three or the four home run game for for Horner was in a losing cause. Oh, yeah. Well, earlier this season in the American League, Joe Carter had a three home run game. Branson pops up to short for Cromer, two out. Joe, I thought I'd tell you a little bit about how long this game has been. There have been 20 pitchers used in the doubleheader, 44 runs have scored, 55 hits, 20 walks allowed, and eight home runs, four of them off the bat of Mark Whitten. And this Sky Report is brought to you by your Chrysler Corporation and your neighborhood Dodge, Jeep Eagle, and Chrysler Plymouth dealers. Reds are down to their final out. It's Brian Dorsett at the plate. And strike one. Tewksbury pumping strikes. He didn't want anybody else to head to the mound for the rest of the night. Tewksbury trying for the complete game. It would be his second of the year. He is two strikes away from his 16th win of the year. Now he's one strike away. Cardinals leading, bottom of the ninth inning, 15 to 2. Kind of hard to pick who the star of the game is this. Wego is, huh? Who would you say? Lonnie Macklin had a good sacrifice fly to score Tewksbury. To Cromer. Game over. Thanks for being a part of history here tonight with us. Mark Witten. That's about as much emotion as he has shown in a Cardinal uniform. Finding back the smiles, he hits four home runs, drives in 12 runs. Cardinals win behind Tewksbury, 15-2. We'll wrap it up in a moment.